When a locomotive model say the SC70s are aging, one thing that drivers can do is to send the model to the shop and get this rebuilt to be modernized. One example would be Canadian National sending their C44-9W locomotives into the shop to be rebuilt to the C6M. This is another thing for Norfolk Sun as they kept purchasing more locomotives for the AC44 C6M rebuilding program. However, there is one rebuilt model that Norfolk Sun used to have, but they were forgotten for time. And this is the story of the model. The year was 1987. General Electric's Beta 99 8 locomotives are aging, and they wanted a new locomotive that can handle freight trains more powerful than the B-9-8s. And so, General Electric decided to create the C-40-8s. For specification, the gauge of the locomotives are 4 feet and 8 and a half inches, with the standard gauge being 5 foot and 3 inches, the length being 30 feet and 8 inches, the width being 10 feet and 3.5 inches. The height of the engines are 15 feet and 4.5 inches, and the local weight is 391,600 pounds, with the prime mover being GEFDL. As a result, the Chicago Northwestern, Conrail, CSX, Norfolk Southern, and U.S. have purchased these locomotive models, so of Conrail taking in 25 units. They were quickly put into service at the Conrail purchased the C4-8s, being put on Conrail's freight trains and running along Conrail's system. North, South, East, or West. They are all assigned to different kinds of freight trains such as coal trains, manifest trains, auto trains, animal trains, gondola trains, any trains you can think of. They are always powerful to pull these trains. But also be on fire or something. Unfortunately, in 1999, Conrad was split up between two railroads, Norfolk Southern and CSX, with 12 units going to Norfolk Southern. While well, the rest went to CSX. After the Conrail split up, Norfolk Sun would bring up with the C4 stage into the A300 series from A300 to A313. It would continue hauling freight trains for Norfolk Sun into the early 20-teens, where they saw the standard cab that seats are aging. And so the maintenance facility decided to take the locomotive into the shops for a one of a kind rebuild. At the old shops in Roanoke, Virginia, a one of a kind rebuild was born, classified as a C40 8.5W or the Dash 8.540 CW locomotives. Locomotives 8500X Norfolk on 8805 and 8501X Norfolk on 8809 are the first two locomotives to receive this rebuild. So, what's the feature in it? Well, some features that this model have are a LLS white cab, which is approved by the FRA, cab signals, electronic air braking, electric parking brake, and finally, a parcel train control or PTC for sort. With this one of the kind rebuilding programs, all standard cab C4 shades will participate in this program. Of all of them be renumbered to A500 to A513, with two locomotives receiving a unique design. The first one being A500, receiving a crescent cab like you mostly find on SC60Es, and A505, which, the, which features a Jivo cab. As you know, the Fox put the locomotives on the main line, hauling freight trains on this system like animal trains, auto trains, new trains. And if you can be fine, until 2016, where everything changes. On Francis Independence Day, July 14, 2016, Norfolk Southern Manifest Train 164 had left for a yard in Birmingham, Alabama, making its way to Chattanooga, Tennessee, consisting of 103 cars and three locomotives at the head end. The locomotives in question are all ex Conrail locomotives. Talking about that shop. But, anyways, leading the train was Dash 8.540CW 8505, first worked for Conrail at 6034, and then renamed to 8306. C4 Dash 8W 8462, 
first work for the elements of local management service in first number 722 which LMS is a substitute for Conrail and GE and finally ex Conrail SC60 6716 used to work for Conrail first number at 6867 just outside of Chattanooga Yard 6 miles at around 8.20 a.m. the trio had entered Wahatchee Pike which the main line would be turned into a double track. Just as the 164 is getting ready to pass by the country road crossing where a switch is nearby to split into a double track, a double track was also heading to the crossing and started crossing over. However, as the manifest 164 looms to view and they saw the double track, the crew of train 164 knew they wouldn't stop in time and they always accepted their fate. At 10.25am, Manifest Train 164 collided with the dump truck, splitting the truck in half and derailed. All three locomotives and 8 to 10 freight cars has also derailed. The leader, AJ505, suffered the most damage as it landed on its left hand side, causing extensive frame damage and a puncture of fuel tank. Luckily, the engine didn't caught on fire. The trailing units, 8462 and 6716, also derailed. But they stay upright for the most part. And soon enough, the main contributing factor to this accident was the crossing, as it wasn't guarded by any lights, gates, or bells. It was only guarded by a crossbar, which it does little to do something to protect people from this train. In the end, 8505 was scrapped right after the accident, while 8462 and 6716 returned to service, but they were both later auctioned off to PLOX. Well, 8462 was scrapped in September of 2020, and the rebels of about 6716 is unknown. After the accident, due to the many problems with the locomotives, no folks on the site to discontinue the program in 2016. What about the remaining dash seats that are meant to participate in this program? Well, they will be later phased out for no folks on this new ET44 EC and ES44 EC locomotives in mid 2016. The last meeting dash shaped 40 C's on the roster will retire in March 2017. What about the rebuilds? Well, in April 2020, no folks will retire all the dash shaped 0.5's 40 CW's. All locomotives stored pending this position, which 8503, 8506 through 8507, and 8513 will presume scrapped. The rest is unknown. In my opinion, this is one of the most interesting rebuilds that no one has ever heard. Starting out as regular standard cabs, they are surviving the murder split, then sent to the shops to be rebuilt, but only to make its way back to retirement. But was there anything to make this rebuild as successful? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs>